All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you. And thank you so much for tuning in to In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Shout out to Miss Abigail Yates. Miss Jennifer Smith is on. Hey, my daughter Ashley Perryman is rocking with us this morning. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Hey, Miss Sheila T. Roby is with us this morning. Good to see you. My cousin Robert Perryman is on today. Love you, my brother. Hey, Minister Jackie Hankins is on today. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Frederick Milner is rocking with us this morning. My brother, good to see you. Miss Donetta Hines is on today. Kaylin Kennebrew is rocking with us today. Miss Juanita Carter is rocking with us today. Good to see you. Hey, Latrina Allen is with us this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Listen, y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Shout out to Miss Bambi, who's on today. Shout out to my spiritual daughter, Bam, who's rocking with us this morning. Good to see you. Miss Jackie Griffin is in the house. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hey, Miss Baraka Yates is with us too. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you so very much for tuning in. Miss Jackie Nelson is in the house. It have been as great as it's with us this morning. Shout out to you. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, Morgan City's greatest is with us this morning. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on. Kelly Johnson is with us this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate you this morning. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Listen, we had to come inside this morning. The wind is blowing hard again here in Palmdale. Sun is out, but the wind is blowing, so we had to come inside. And uh, hey, I'm encouraging you to share, like, tag, invite, start a watch party, get other people to come on, be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perry. Let's have an amazing uh, time in the Lord this morning. Make sure you got your coffee, your water, your juice, your tea, whatever you're drinking today. Make sure you got it. It's ready to go. We're going to have a great time in the Lord this morning. We really are. So, hey, I appreciate y'all so very much for tuning in. All right. Shout out to Miss Victoria Williams, who's with us this morning. Good to see you. Let me get some of this amazing coffee that my wife made. And um, so we can have a great time in the Lord today, all right? So good. So good to see everybody, though. And this coffee is good and hot. <laughs> hey, Miss Shirley Powell, Miss Shannon Gooseby is rocking with us today. But let's get to it. You no, know, years ago, uh, man, in the, my earliest recollection of going to, the, going to Ellis Rogers Elementary was, I believe, 1975. And uh, Ellis Rogers Elementary, for those who 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 may remember may not remember was a little elementary school I don't know if it's still there that was out by Mississippi Valley State University had some some homes across the street from it had some apartments that was really behind the school I never forget my 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 elementary school teacher at that time when I was in preschool was Miss Roberts Miss Roberts was a beautiful young lady light skinned lady tough stern but fat I'll never forget. We'd have to go eat our lunch, and then once we finished eating our lunch, Miss Roberts would take us out and let us play on the swings and the monkey bars at the school. And we'd play and have a good time. And I've just seen this. If just when we were getting happy and having the most fun on this playground, Miss Roberts would say, playtime is over. Boy, when she would say, playtime is over, I hated it. Because it just seemed like I had just gotten into the groove of swinging on the swings and just gotten in the groove of climbing the monkey bars and hanging from the bars. It just seemed like I had just gotten into the groove of it. And now you're saying, playtime is over. And usually when we had to come in, we'd have to come in now. She was going to do one or two things. She was going to give us a snack, read to us, and then we were going to have to take a nap. Hated that. And then you'd wake up, maybe about an hour before it was time to catch Mr. Duck Harris bus home. <laughs> but the thing that stuck out in my head is that she would say playtime was over. As you look around where we are today, you look at the things that are happening in society today, you can't help but to realize playtime is over. As you look at the thousands of people who are dying every day because of this coronavirus, you're seeing people who are in uproars with one another. Uh, people are in uproars with the government because the government is not showing up in a timely manner to help me. I need all of these respirators. I need this. I need that. 
And then you're hearing some rebukes come from the White House and says, what are you doing with all of these 10,000 masks? It's like somebody is taking them. They're walking in the doors and somebody's hiding them somewhere else. And so the whole world is in an uproar. People on the front lines are secretly giving you videos and telling you how important it is for us to protect ourselves and for us to keep ourselves and for us to cover ourselves because this pandemic is serious. And I'm looking at people who are panicking where thousands are dying per day. And yet and still, people don't realize that playtime is over. When you look at things that are taking place today, some are saying maybe God caused this. Others are saying that God didn't cause it, that it is the devil. I don't know whether God caused it or it's the devil or not. But I do know that it's time for everybody to get their life right. I do know that. I do know that playtime is over. I do know that it's time for everybody to look at themselves in the mirror and examine themselves. The Bible says in the New Testament, for every man to examine himself to see if he even be in the faith. Now, I know we got some nurses on here. Shout out to Miss Kelly Johnson again. And one of the things that I learned uh, when I was doing the teaching series entitled uh, How to Become a Better Me, one of the steps that I included in that teaching series was self-examination. Usually doctors, <coughs> usually doctors, excuse, <coughs> excuse me, usually doctors now will tell women that if they do a self-examination, if they examine their own breasts, if they check their own breasts, they can determine ahead of time if they got breast cancer before the doctors can. You can, in a sense, give, you, give yourself your own mammogram, and then if you find the law, you can hurry up and get to us, and we can do everything else uh, to determine whether you have breast cancer or not, or if it's just a mole or some type of lump that can be dealt with immediately. But all of that comes because of self-examination. So when the Bible says for every man to examine himself to see if he be even be in the faith, he's telling you that you have to do a spiritual checkup to see if you're even walking right, to see if you're even talking right, to even see if you're living right, to see if you're even living according to God's will and according to God's way. The Bible tells us that every man's work is going to be tried in the fire to see what sort it is. And I promise you every man's work is being tried in the fire right now to see what sort it is. It's up to you now. For you to walk right. It's up to you now to make the decision that you're going to talk right. It's up to you that you're going to make the decision that you're going to live for God. You're going to live for his kingdom. That you're going to be a kingdom citizen. A kingdom agent for real. The playtime is over. It used to be now where people would play church and everything would be all good. But I read in the Bible where Jesus said just like it was in the days of Noah. Where they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving into marriage. But then all of a sudden now a shift took place. All of a sudden something supernaturally shifted and took place. What took place? The flood came upon the earth and it came up unexpectedly. And so guess what happened? Because people were not prepared. Because people had not made the decision to do what was right. All of a sudden now they missed out and only, only one family of folk was saved and that was the family of Noah. The Bible says that the man heart was evil continuously. Every thought of man was evil. Every thought of man was on the wrong track. It had nothing to do with God. It was all about self-indulgence. It was all about me doing what I want to do, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it. And so we're living in a seeker-friendly day, even in our churches today, where people are not taught anymore about holiness of hell. Nobody's taught that anymore. See, it used to be a time where you grew up and the old preachers would stood there, stand up and tell you, it's either holiness of hell, you got to make a choice. They didn't understand the concept that God wants to bless you. They didn't understand the concept that God wants to take you to your next level. They didn't understand the concept of that. They had no clue of it. All they wanted to do was to make sure that they lived to please God. They didn't know that there was another step in God. So God began to raise up preachers to come along and tell you that there's a new step in me. That I want you financially blessed. I want you living by faith. I want you to have a relationship with me. I want you to be able to possess these things. But the thing that you cannot forget is that there is something called holiness of hell. Playtime is over. You have to make a decision today whether you're going to be for God or whether you're not going to be for God. I know I know that this message is not a popular one at this moment, but you got to realize something that you have been brought into a situation now where you are in the house and doors are shut on you. You can't go shopping anymore. You can't go buy cars. You can't go buy houses. You can't really go do much of anything anymore. And that is because God is bringing you into a place of isolation where you have to be connected to him. It's in this season now 
that you need to get to know God on a whole nother level. It's in this season now where you're going to have to surrender all of you to God at this moment because the world is telling you, I cannot, I cannot provide for you. For some of you, you excited about the $1,200 stimulus package, the $2,400 stimulus package. You're going crazy over it. You can't wait to get it. Uh, but may I tell you that you're not going to be able to do much of anything with it. Once you get it, what is it going to help you do? Pay a few bills, then you're going to be in the same situation again. And guess what? The government is going to come back to you and say, we may be able to give you an extra thousand, but we can't do nothing else for you. Because everything is turning on a dime. Everything is shifting. Everything is turning up on its head. The government doesn't have your answer. The politicians don't have your answer. Listen to this. The doctors don't have your answer. They are trying things. They are trying medical things to see if this works. And when you look at the White House, the person who's leading in the White House, he don't know what he's talking about. He don't have the answers either. He's contradicting every word that he is being saying, that he has said. And then all of a sudden, scientists got to come back and bring him into alignment and bring him into check because of things he's saying. He don't know himself. So it's not in the government. It's not in the White House. It's not in the politics. It's not in the medical science. It's not in your money. So guess who it is? Guess who's going to be able to look out to you and I and take care of us? It's God himself. So you better develop a relationship with God like never before. But the Bible says to us in Psalms 84 and 11, the scripture says, and no good thing will he withhold from us if we walk up right before him. Notice this now. He will not withhold good things from you. What, what are good things? Good things are things that come directly from the Lord. The Bible says every good gift. And every perfect gift, it comes down from the Father of lights. It comes from God. It comes from Him. So watch this now. God is putting you and I in a season now where we're going to have to get to know Him on another level. So He says, and no good thing will He withhold from us. And here's the qualifier from those who walk upright. You're going to have to make the decision now that you're going to walk upright before God. You're going to have to repent for the sins that you, you, you've committed and the things that you have done wrong. I know many times you hear people say, well, listen, you've got to go back and repent for every sin. There's no way possible you can repent for every sin because you don't remember all of the ones you've done. And if you start, if you got to repent for every sin just to make it in, it's going to take you from now on to remember every one. If you write down, you have to start all over again because you forgot this one and you forgot that one. So you can't do it. But what you can do is come to God and say, God, you know what? I repent of my sins today. I throw myself on your mercy seat today. I throw myself on the altar of you today, God. And I invite you into my life. I know, I know, I know for some of you, you don't want to hear this. But listen to this. You got to look around and see what's going on around you. Scientists are saying that perhaps over 2 million people will lose their life to this disease. Now, may I tell you today that you don't have to lose your life to this that if this disease comes upon you and you cannot get free from it, at least you can lose your life in Christ. The Bible tells you and I that if we lose our life in Christ, we gain everything. Well, what do you mean I gain everything? I gain the life that God has for me. I gain his life. I gain everything that he has for me. So it's time now for you to look in the mirror and look at you and get you together. You have to tell you playtime is over. When we came off of those monkey bars, when we came out of that playground, and all of a sudden, we came into that, came into the school. Miss Robinson made sure we had a snack. We had that snack, and when we sat down, whether the snack was an apple, whether it was a cookie, whether it was an orange or orange juice or whatever, Miss Robinson made sure we had a snack. But then, all of a sudden, here's what Miss Robinson did: was set it down, and she read us a story. Every student who was outside during playtime had to go to their own classroom, and they had to be with their own homeroom teacher. May I tell you today that God now has told you that playtime is over and guess what he's doing? He's brought you back into your own homeroom and guess what he's now doing? He's giving you a snack but at the same time he's setting you down now where you have to learn about who he is. It's in this season now that you need to break out your Bible and begin to read your word. It's in this season now that you need to turn on Christian television and listen to Christian television. May I tell you today that Migos not going to get you through this situation. 50 Cent not going to get you through this, 50, this, this situation. Beyonce, she not going to get you through this. Jay-Z not going to get you through this. They don't have answers. They can't get you through this. But guess who they need themselves? They need God themselves. So may I tell you today that you're going to have to come on in and shut these doors today and you're going to have to tell you that playtime is over. You're going to have to get to know God on a whole nother level. You're going to have to understand who he is to you. And you're going to have to lay out before him and just give your all to him in this season. Because without him, the Bible says, you and I can do nothing. Scripture tells us that if we abide in him and he abide in us, 
Bible says we can ask what we will and it shall be done for us. But the key is we got to abide in him. My abiding in him means I got to connect with him. I got to allow him to engraft me in. I got to allow him to connect me to himself. Because if I am connected to him, I'll never want for anything. My wife said to me the other day, she says, honey, do you not realize that in the midst of all of this, and I'm not working at the Air Force anymore because of the shutdown and everything that's taking place. I'm not working there anymore. And do you not realize that in the midst of all of this financial crisis that are taking place, that we are not lacking anything, that we are not without anything? I said, you know, I thought about that. She says, look in, look in the pantry. The pantry is full of stuff. Look at what God has done. He's provided for us in this difficult time. I said, yeah. That's the kind of God that we serve. She starts to talk about the favor that she's been getting over the phone now because of certain things. May I tell you today that when you are connected to God, he will provide. When you are connected to God, he will provide. He will provide. You will not die in this season. You will, you will thrive in this season because you are connected to God. But don't mess up your connection because you're in a place right now where you are lonely at this moment. I, I really was going to get into that teaching series I had, but I may deal with that later on, maybe next week or a few weeks from now. But some of you will shut up in the house and you become lonely at this moment. So here you are. You hold it, but you're still horny. You don't know how to reconcile your flesh together. You don't know how to bring your flesh into subjection with, your, with, with, with being holy. So all of a sudden your flesh is out of control. And so here you are. You're doing all that you can to get your flesh under control. Uh, but before you know it, you're going to take a phone call or you're going to call somebody to come by because I need to get this under control. May I tell you today, reconcile your flesh today. Get it right with God. It's who you got to get it right with in this season. God has got us in a place where we can't do nothing but to seek his face. We're watching preachers all over the world who finally coming out and say, well, God showed me this. Well, if he showed you this, how come we ain't heard from you all this time? Why we didn't hear from you when you first heard it? We only heard one preacher. We only heard one preacher that came about, one lady who came about and told us on social media last year that God showed her in a dream all of this stuff was take, would take place and that it would come in the form of a flu life sentence. Only, only one person. We ain't heard all the rest of you. Only heard one. My pastor came along and told us in the beginning, told us in the latter part of last year that the beginning of this year would be very difficult. We heard him. We ain't heard nobody else. And we said that we would make it through this situation. We would make it through. But listen to this. You're going to have to learn how to keep the faith in this season. You're going to have to learn to develop a relationship with God. You're going to have to learn to put everything on the back burner. You're going to have to learn to get rid of everything. It used to be that you could get cute to go everywhere. Now you can't do nothing but get cute to go from the bedroom to the to the front room. That's all you can do. You can't get you you can't get cute to go nowhere else because ain't nobody looking at you now. Because everybody's under quarantine at this moment. The whole state, the whole country, they're about to put everybody down on a twenty four hour lockdown. So it ain't even about your outfits you wearing. No nobody cares at this moment about your Jordans. Nobody cares about your Tommy Hill figure. Nobody cares about your Gucci that you can't afford. Nobody cares about any of that stuff. All you can do now is go from the bedroom to the living room and from the living room to the kitchen and from the kitchen to the bathroom. That's all you can do. You can't go nowhere else. Ain't nothing else being offered to you. You can't go shop. You can't go do this. You can't go do that. And this is taking place countrywide. And the reason for it is because God is bringing you into a place where you have to realize that playtime is over. For some of you, it's in this season that God is bringing creativity out of you like never before. You're going, to do, you're going to find out how creative you really are in this season. You're going to find out that there's some things that God has buried on the inside of you years ago. But here's what he's doing now. Bringing it up out of you now at this season. It's important for you to understand that playtime is over. We played enough. We played enough. We played enough in these streets. We played enough in this world. We played church long enough. The Bible makes a point to say, in the last days, people will have what we call a form of godliness. A form of godliness means you have the look down pat of what a Christian is all about. 
You have the shout down pat. You have the, the Christian lingo down pat. You got the Christianese down pat. You got all of that stuff. You know how to shout on cue. You know how to sing on cue. You know how to preach a word that would cause people to shout on cue. You know how to do all of that. You got a form of godliness. But the reality is you are not living like you said you are. Preachers are going to die in mass, in mass, uh, mass at a mass rate because they got a form of godliness. The reality is you are not what you said you are. The reality is there are a lot of prophets going to die at a mass rate because you're not what you said you are. There are a lot of evangelists, apostles, and all of these people are going to die at a mass rate because you're not who you said you are. You're playing too much. For those of you who are watching me today and you're still dibbling and dabbling in the homosexual lifestyle, but yet and still you say, I'm an Elobo Shatai Christian. You, you better bring that Elo Shatai into, into play right now. You better bring that in. You better reel that in because the Bible is clear and the Bible is true. God didn't change his word just because you wanted to compromise. He didn't change his word. Guess what he says? He says, no effeminate person. Going to heaven, not a one. And guess what you're going to have to do, boo-boo? You're going to have to reel this thing in. You're going to have to reel it in. You can't play with this stuff anymore. You can't play with this. You can't play with singing in the choir. You can't play with, with, with playing the instruments in the church. You can't play with preaching this pul preaching from behind the pulpit. You can't play with this stuff anymore. For some of you, you've been given a pass and you've been playing too long. Now, all of a sudden, you don't realize that your playtime is over. You're going to have to reel this thing in. Playtime is over. You're going to have to get this thing together. You're going to have to come before God and acknowledge what your sins are before God and ask God to help me. You're going to have to say, God, come into my life and save my life and change my life. I've been playing with this thing long enough. I've been out here doing too much. I've been the preacher who's been sleeping with the different women in my church. I've been the one, God, who's been wishing that this relationship would be in, would be over, God. I've been the one who's been that. I've been the one, God, who's been secretly looking at another man, even though I know I got a husband. I've been the one who's secretly looking at this, wishing that I had him and wishing that I had his lifestyle. God, I've been committing adultery in my heart. I've been looking at him and lusting after her. I've been wanting this and wanting that. God, I need you to help me. You got to come to the realization that playtime is over, that God is not playing anymore. He's not playing with us. He never was playing, but you need to understand that playtime is over. The Bible says to us, surely your sins will find you out. That's the book. I can't change it for you. Can't change it for myself. But it says, surely your sins will find you out. What does that mean? That whatever is done in the dark, it's eventually going to come to the light. Your sins are going to be revealed. The devil knows how to keep secrets on you. But at the moment, he needs to reel you back in. He knows how to reveal your sins to the world. He knows how to do it. You need to realize that your playtime is over. For some of you right now, you have divorced but you're physically still in the relationship. Y'all physically still married, but the reality is you done divorced him, you done divorced her, but you're still together. You better wake up this morning and start to realize that my playtime is over. I'm not playing with God anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to get this right. I'm going to get my flesh together. I'm going to get it together. I'm going to reel it in because this is what's going to take you to hell. You got to get this. The Bible says that here, rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he says to Jesus, good master, what must I do? That I may have eternal life. That I may inherit eternal life. Jesus tells him, go keep the commandments. And the rich young ruler said, I've done all of those from my birth. I did all of that. And Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus looking at him and loved him. And said, okay, here's what I need you to do. Go sell all you have. Give to the poor. And then come follow me. The Bible says that here's what this young ruler does. The Bible says he walks away. He, he, well, well, Jesus says to him, he says, one thing thou lack, if a one thing you lack, and the rich young ruler is going, what is that? Go sell all you have and give to the poor and come follow me. The rich young ruler looks at him and the Bible says he walks away, greed because he was sad at that saying. I used to think that maybe he was sad because Jesus said to him, go sell what you have and give to the poor. But then when I started looking at the scripture deeper and looking at it a little bit different, I started to realize that he could also be sad when Jesus said to him, one thing is needful and one thing you lack. Huh. See, for one of us, for us, we may, what if, if, if the Lord says, well, you got five things that's lacking that'll stop you from going to heaven. You, you can look at the one thing and say the one thing is all good. At least I got one. He got five. He got 10. She got 20. They got 30. All I got is one. May I tell you today that one thing will carry you to hell? It doesn't matter if I got one and she got 20, I got one and he got five, I got one and she got 12. One thing can carry you.
to hell. One thing. You got to get that one thing together. You got to get it together. The Bible tells us that broad is the way that leads you to destruction. <laughs> but the scripture tells us, but narrow is the road that takes us to heaven. You got to make a decision today. You got to realize that playtime is over today. Playtime is over. That we can't play with being a Christian anymore. We can't play with this. That we got to be real. The Bible says we are light upon the hill that cannot be hid. So are we going to shine like we're supposed to? Or is our light going to be dim and dull? We got this lamp in the house and, you know, I was flicking the thing and the light wouldn't come on. And so I'm trying to figure out why this thing won't come on. Then I start to realize the reason that it won't come on is because it's not plugged into the socket. It's not plugged into the source. So all of a sudden I take the cord and plug it to the source. I'm still trying to figure out why this thing won't come on. And all of a sudden now I start to turn the button. It's because it didn't come on now because I had turned the button off. So I turn it. And it, and it comes on. But the light seemed to be dim. I turn it again and the light got brighter. I turned it again and the light got brighter. And when I turned it again, it went off. I said, oh, you got three stages to you. If I just turn you on, you'll be dope. But if I turn the button one more time, you'll get brighter. For, for, for as many times as I turn the button, you will get brighter. And for many of you right now, you're trying to shine, but you're not plugged into the source. You're trying to preach to people. You're trying to sing to people. You're trying to do all of these things, but you're not plugged into the source. What do you mean, Pastor, I'm not plugged into the source? How do I know you're not plugged into the source? I'm not plugged into the source because the Bible says, I know a tree by the fruit that it bears. You're not displaying the light of a Christian. You're not displaying the light of God. You're not displaying the light of Christianity. You're not displaying that. And so now all of a sudden, when we get you plugged into the light, you're dull now as we turn your own. And the reason that you're dull is because you're still dibbling and dabbling in the world. You're still living in the world. You got one foot in the world and one foot out of the world. May I tell you today that you cannot live, live in the world, live with one foot in the world. And when I'm talking about living with one foot in the world, I'm talking about living like the world. Here you are. You're driving it like it's hot on a continuous basis. You're in the club on a continuous basis. You're still rolling one. You're still smoking one. You're still drinking one. You're still throwing it back every now and then. But then on Sunday, here you are, Shondo. You got the phone. So now... Because we're revealing it to you because you're still coming to church. Your light is starting to come from being dim now. So it's starting to bright up, brighten up a little bit. The reason that your light is brightening up a little bit is because you're starting to realize that the world don't have nothing to offer for me. All I have is God. And so now all of a sudden you're starting to come out of the world, but you're still attracted to it a little bit. You're like Lot's wife. You're still turning back to it every now and then. Because of your friends posting things on social media and they make it look like to you that it's all good, that everything is all pertinent, that everything is all of that. And so here you are, you, you're still looking back at it. The Bible says if we look back at the kingdom, we look back at the world, we're not fit for the kingdom. But here you are, you know it now, you're learning some things and your attitude is changing, your character is changing, everything is shifting about you. But you're still glancing at the world and still reminiscing about, mm, I still want to do that. I still like to have that. But because you continuously keep coming, because you continuously keep coming and you continuously keep coming, all of a sudden your light is starting to get brighter now. And the reason that your light has gotten bright now is because you are all the way in for God. It's because you have made the decision that you're not going to compromise the gospel. I'm not going to hang out with them anymore. I'm not going to be connected to them anymore. I'm not going to do this with them. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm totally in with God. And what you don't realize is they may be talking about you at this moment because you're not hanging around with them. But what they will be doing later on is calling on you because you are the only one who will be able to get a prayer through for them because they are looking at your life and see that you have slowly but surely walked away from what they deem to be a real life. You've been in relationships with them. You've been hanging out with your girls. You say, but they still living like the world. You already know that they don't have it together. You already know that they got the money, but they frustrated. They going through hell and high water. They are still confused. Even though they got the Gucci, they got the Louis, they got the Prada, they got the Chanel, they got all of this stuff, but they still have chaos and confusion in their life. Here you are. You don't have what they have. But you've entered into a realm of peace. You've entered into a place now where you are happy. You are entering into a place now where it seems as if every care that was on you has now been removed because you've been rolling this thing on God. And so now all of a sudden they've been snickering and talking about you. Look at her. She ain't got no man. I got me a man. Look at this. Uh, she ain't got nothing. I'm wearing this and I'm wearing that. But when they get in trouble, you the one they calling, baby. You the one that they calling. And the reason that they're calling you is because they saw your light. 
May I tell you today that you have to be the light of God. You have to be the light of God that God's going to use you in this season because here's what he's about to do. Show the world that they cannot make it without him. And you got to be the one that's shining bright like a diamond that says, walk this way. This is the way. The same God who brought me out is the same one who will bring you out. The same one who delivered me and helped me to get my flesh in check is the same one who will help you get your flesh in check. You got to be the light now. And if you don't, if you're not the light, that's what you're not going to do. You're not going to draw people to you anymore. You are supposed to be the light upon the hill that cannot be hid. You are supposed to be the light that draws the moth to the flame. You are the one that's supposed to be. But you cannot draw people to Christ if you live like the world. Let, let me tell you this. The Bible says you could be in this world, but not of this world. May I tell you the scripture says you could be in this world, but not of this world. You have to realize in this season that play time is over. You can't play church no more. You can't play being a Christian anymore. You can't play with this thing. You're going to have to be a thousand percent in it to win it now because you can't turn to nobody else but God. The time is coming where the essential business is going to be shut down. May I tell you that the essential business are going to be shut down now because the people, there are people who have to provide. There are people who have to do these things. There are people who have to make sure that their groceries that are stopped. There are people who have to make sure that the medication is taken care of. And all of that, all of that's done through people. And if the world doesn't bring itself into alignment, if the world doesn't shift, if the people who are in this world don't shift, then may I tell you that the essential businesses are going to shut down too. So you got to get it together. You got to make sure... That you understand that playtime is over. I didn't like it when Miss Roberts told us. And I believe Miss Roberts has gone home to be with the Lord. I didn't like it when Miss Roberts said playtime was over. I wanted to stay on the monkey bars. I wanted to stay on the swing sets. I wanted to stay out there playing basketball and football with Byron Williams and them. I wanted to stay out there with Aaron Lewis and them. And I wanted to stay out there with Steve Edwards and all of these people. I wanted to stay out there with these people and have fun with them. I wanted to do that. Because I, I was caught up in that. I didn't want to do nothing else. I didn't want to come inside and get no snack and then take a nap while she reads to me. I, I didn't want that. But listen to this. God knows exactly what you need in this season. See, I don't look at this quarantine as a negative thing. I see it as a God thing. Uh, and God loves me enough to bring me in the house. <laughs> he loves me enough to bring me in the house and provide for me while I'm in the house. He loves me enough to keep me from that which is outside of the house. He loves me enough. You got to get to the point today where you got to say, God loves me enough to quarantine me. He loves me enough. He loves me enough. He loves me enough to put me in a position where I don't mess up things, where I don't mess me up. He loves me enough to protect me from the hurt, harm, and danger, even though I may not understand it, may not like it. He loves me enough. And that's the love of God that's on display while you're in a quarantine situation. Man, you're going you learning to get to know your family all over again. You're learning now to get to know God all over again. You're learning now to be creative now all over again. Because for many of you, you couldn't, you weren't creative anymore. But now you ain't got no choice. You got to learn to be creative now. You got to learn to give God praise. And it's because God has you in a season now. Hmm. <laughs> Well, you're in a timeout. And the timeout is not bad. The timeout is good. The playtime is over for you. The playtime is over for me. The playtime is over for every one of us. I would encourage you today to take this opportunity to just ask God to forgive you and to repent of all your sins. Matter of fact, I'm going to lead you in a prayer today that will get you back on track with God. This don't have nothing to do with how old you are, how young you are. This doesn't have anything to do with you, whether because you're a preacher, because you're a singer. This has nothing to do with any of that. Every one of us has some issues, some challenges that we've been dealing with that we ain't told nobody about. Every one of us got some areas in our lives that we need working on. Every one of us do. So here we are today. We have to get it right with God. So I'm going to lead you in this prayer today. And all I need you to do is to repeat it back as I lead you in this prayer. And once this is over, Maybe you the person now who says, you know what, I'm glad that it was taught so I can so I can repent and accept Jesus all over again. If that's you today, you accepting Christ all over again, I want you to be able to type this on the screen that I accept him all over again. 
My job is to lead you today. <laughs> I never forget I preached a, a, a gangster funeral one time. Gangsters everywhere in the funeral. And I got up and I preached a message. Is there a heaven for a gangster? And the reality is only if the gangster changes his life. I know that there's some gangsters who are watching me today. You're a gangster in these streets. But Reverend came to tell you this morning that he a gangster with this word. And he's not afraid of you. But he's introducing you to the one that can turn your gangster legitimate today. Maybe you're the person this morning who says, I passed, I've been strung out on these drugs. I don't know what to do. I've been dealing in this homosexual lifestyle. I've been the person who's living with person that's not mad, that I'm not married with. And I've been acting like a wife. I've been acting like a husband to him. God, I'm, I'm indulging in some things that ain't right. I want to be the one today, God, to give my life over to you and turn it around with you. I've been the one who's been playing church. I won't go to church, but I act like I'm the church. I'm, I got this form of godliness. I know how to shout, but I'm still doing my thing today. I want my life to change today. If that be you, you'll get led today. Maybe you're the one that's got some secret hidden desires that you secretly low-key cheating on your husband and secretly low-key cheating on your wife. If that's you, <laughs> today is your day where you get free today. Maybe you're the person who's on here today and says, Pastor, I don't know whether is there any hope for me. I have been married multiple times and nothing is working out for me because I got an anger problem. Is that you today? You're going to be free today because of this prayer. If that's you. I came to encourage you this morning. Maybe you're the person who's been battling suicide and ready to give your, ready to take your life at a moment's notice because things are not working right. If that's you, your life's going to shift and change today after this prayer. Maybe you're the person now who's been grippling and battling with issues and substance abuse or whatever the case may be. Maybe you're the Christian who have compromised your integrity because of your children. Now, my child is battling homosexuality. My son is doing dirt and I know he's doing, but... I'm compromising my integrity because I love my child. If that's you today, today after this prayer, you're going to be on the right track with God. <laughs> so let me pray for you today. Let me lead you this morning. I want you to repeat this after me. Father God, without you, I am lost. And without you, I can do nothing. I invite you into my life today. I get rid of every sin that I've ever committed. And have ever thought of. I cast it on you today. I accept you Jesus. As my Lord and my Savior. I make you the Lord. Over my life. I make you Lord over my money. I make you Lord over my family. I make you Lord over everything that I own today. And now because. I have cast all of my cares on you. You are now in my life. And I am saved now. In Jesus name. I know, I know that that's not, that's not, that's, that's, that's a little different for everybody at this moment because everybody's preaching and teaching on these broadcasts and everybody's getting happy and getting excited. But, but wouldn't you want to accept Jesus all over again? Man, maybe there's somebody else on here who say, you know what? I accept him all over again. I accept him all over again. I accept him today. I know, I know, I know, I know. You, Pastor, this ain't that time for that. Listen to this. The Bible said tomorrow is not promised to any man. The Bible said the day you hear my voice, harden out your heart. <laughs> it's the day anytime you hear the word being given to you and an opportunity is being presented to you, it's your time now. It's your season now. If you're here today and you say, you know what, Pastor, that, that was for me. I accept him all over again. Come on. Just post it out there. Say, I accept him all over again. I accept him all over again. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. There's a few more you on here right now. <laughs> you might as well just say I accept him all over again There's a few more of you out here today That I accept him all over again You may not go to church anywhere But I accept him all over again You don't physically go to somebody's building But here's what God has done for you Because he loves you so much He's positioned you to go to church with me Every single day And he's done that You go with me every day Look how, God, look how good God has been to you That he has not excluded you but he puts you in a position to where you go to church with me every day. Some of you tied to my ministry, and I have never seen you and met you in person. You still tied to our ministry. Do not think that God will forget you for that. Other people may put you down and say, well, you don't go here. You don't go there. You ain't going to come to the building. But you, you said, I go to church with Pastor Perryman every day. Same grace that's on him is on me. I, I'm telling you today. I'm telling you. Some of you, I ain't seen you in years. 
And the accounting team says, well, this person is tied into the ministry. We don't know who this person is. And I say, well, who, what's the address? And they tell me that I saw oh, that's somebody that would, that, that's somebody who go to, who went to LCHS, somebody from the IBM. That, that, these people are connected. Hey, don't, don't discount them. These people are connected. Let these people connect. And so now all of a sudden now God is bringing you every single week to hear a word <laughs> from the Lord. <laughs> talking to somebody today. Shout out to my guy, Pastor Sylvester Bell, who's on today. Got to stop the presses when Pastor Bell comes on because he be the bomb. I hope his wife is watching so she'll know he's an amazing GQ model. <laughs> Listen, I extended that invitation to you today, but I'm getting ready to pray. And when I pray, I'm giving somebody their day. Listen, we I've counted so far at least six people who said that they accept him all over again. There's another, there's another five of you who watch him right now. There's another five of you watching right now that you need to say, you know what? I accept him all over again. You on here. We're giving you time, but I'm getting ready to pray. Maybe you can put it out there. I accept him all over again. You are on here today. There's another five of you today. You need to do that. You need to do that and accept him all over again. Shout out uh, to Miss Teresa Kirk who is watching us. She's the Wonder Woman of Women. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. Shout out to Miss Teresa Wells who's rocking with us today as well. Shout out to you, sweetheart. You've been in my prayers every day. You know, every day you coming through this thing with flying colors, baby. This coronavirus can't hold you down because you're a warrior woman. You coming through this thing like an Amazon queen. You be the bomb, girl. So you coming out of this thing, and we believe it, all right? Shout out to Miss Shirley Powell, who's on today. Miss Irene Holmes, who's on today. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I appreciate you. Miss Willie Francis Hill is rocking with us today. You know she's a warrior. She's been through the storm and the rain, the heartache and the pain, but God has brought her out where she stands up on the mountaintop. So shout out to her this morning as well. So listen, let me pray for you today while you're accepting him. There's a few more of you today. There's a few more of you today. Come on, accept him today. You got time, accept him today. Accept him today. Hey, my guy, Frank Marion is on today. Shout out to him and his beautiful family, man. Good to see you, my brother. Tell your wife, man, and your kids, and Pastor Sophia and Pastor Perry and say we love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in this morning. <laughs> Good to see y'all. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me pray for you. I'm praying today. I'm praying today that you would just get to a place where you say, I'm not playing with this thing anymore. That my playtime is over. That I'm for God 100%. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would bless your people, that you would add to your people, and that you would increase your people. Take your people to another level in you. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, as I pray today, help us, God, to realize that our playtime is over. Help us to get our lives together. Help us, God, to get our lives right with you. Help us to repent of the things that we've done wrong. Help us to apologize to the people we have done wrong to. Help us, God, to, to forgive those people who have wronged us so that we might be on the right track with you. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, for every person who's watching me who may be battling this coronavirus, I speak to that demonic spirit and I cancel its assignment now in the name of Jesus. For everybody who's, every person who's being touched by it now in Jesus' name, it dies instantly in your body. And God, I thank you that even as I'm praying now, your grace and your mercy covers. And Lord, I give you praise and I give you glory for it. And I thank you for everything that you are doing for us now. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I lift up the country of Belize. I pray for every Belizean citizen. I pray your grace and mercy over the country now. And God, I thank you right now that every citizen is blessed beyond measure. And Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for my town's peace and prosperity, my town's healing and deliverance. And God, and I thank you right now that even as I'm praying now, your grace covers my town, and I give you praise for it. Now, Father, we lift up the Delta as a whole. We pray for peace and prosperity to flow like a river throughout the Delta. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, don't go anywhere. I got to give somebody their day today. Hey, we're giving three people their day today. Today is Frank Milner's day. It's Frank Milner's day. Whatever Frank wants, he gets. Whatever Frank needs, gets supplied. It's his day. Today is Frank Marion's day. Whatever Frank Marion wants, he gets. Whatever Frank Marion needs, gets supplied. It's his day. 
But also, it's Pastor Sylvester Bell's day. Whatever they want, get supplied. Whatever they need, get supplied. It's their day today. So show these brothers some love this morning and let them know that it is their day today. It's their day. Hey, oh, and, and shout out to Kalen Kennebrew. It is Kalen Kennebrew's day today, too. Whatever Kalen wants, he gets. Whatever Kalen needs, gets supplied. It is his day. And then we'll last but not least with this person right here. It's my cousin Robert Perryman's day. Whatever Robert Perryman wants, he gets. Whatever he needs, gets supplied. It be their day today. So show them some love and some appreciation. It's some love. Show them love and appreciation. Please do that. Hey, go to our website at Kingdom Life Faith Center. If this message has been a blessing to you, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, go to our website, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Get your seed in the ground today. Don't let the devil talk you out of your giving. Remember, we said we don't believe in Team I. We believe in Team We. We are Team So for every soul we win, for every life we change, for every person who gets built up. You get credit for it because you're a part of the team, all right? You're a part of the team. So get on it. Get on it. Get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website, KingdomLifeFaithCenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Hey, if you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the Cash App. Cash App is the dollar sign Pastor Perryman. Again, the Cash App is the dollar sign Pastor Perryman. Get your seed in the ground today. Don't let the devil talk you out of your giving. You are not sowing to an individual, but you are sowing to, into a ministry that's going to bless your life. So get your seed in the ground today. Get your seed in the ground today. I want y'all to know how much we love y'all, how much we appreciate y'all, that this is no joke for us. Hey, these messages sometimes I'm teaching and preaching that sometimes God just downloads them into me when I first wake up in the morning. But a lot of times I already have these things planned out months in advance. It depends on how God wants to work. This is not my ministry. This is God's ministry. He formed it. He established it. He started it. I'm just the person that he's using in a human frail body to get some things going. So, hey, y'all get your seed in the ground today. Don't let the devil talk you out of your giving. Again, you can go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and you can get your seed in the ground. For those of you who say, well, Pastor, I don't, do long, I don't do online giving. Hey, if you don't do online giving, that's okay. We're going to put on the screen here in just a moment our church's P.O. box. It'll come in with the uh, become a partner, but we'll give you our church's P.O. box so you can have it. So if you want to mail it in, you can do that. That's your choice. Uh, it's P.O. box 3231. Again, P.O. box 3231. That's Quartz Hill, California. Quartz Hill, California. That's Q-U-A-R-T-Z. Q-U-A-R-T-Z, Hill, H-I-L-L, California, and the zip code is 93586. Again, 93586. Again, P.O. Box 3231, Quartz Hill, California, zip code is 93586. It'll be on the screen here in just a moment. Well, listen, get your seat in the ground. Don't let the devil rob you of your giving, all right? Hey, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all, and we'll see y'all again tomorrow morning. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Love y'all. Be blessed.